deliver that right to your ear holes is Papa Lunchbox. Yes, 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 yes. Um, I had a conversation uh, about the pay-per-view with one Jack Bunja. Jack Bunja, a friend of the Jack. show, friend of the Panel Riot nice. show. Um, and uh, we were talking about the Divas and how they had a really good match, but there wasn't much build for it. There wasn't a whole lot going around. It was a brief introduction, but then they went out and had an awesome match. Um, so the big question this week is this. Um, what makes a good feud? Should the focus be on the build? Should the focus be on the execution of the match? Are they equally important? Uh, can a match survive with one being better than the other? What makes a good feud? I'm so happy about these questions. <laughs> good. Do you want to? You want to answer first? Because uh, I it's actually I have been talking about this a lot, uh, which I think plays into it. Uh, two factors that come into me with a feud. Wait, can, uh, before you say this, uh, I just want to say it makes me so happy when I ask a question and people are like. Ah, oh, that's good. <laughs> I want to answer that. <laughs> it makes me ecstatic. Okay, go ahead. Um, two things for me, and these aren't the definitive things of the feud, but like I, I think these are two things you should keep into account always. One is that whatever you do in the feud should translate over into the actual <laughs> match. Uh, I bring this up because uh, at Battleground we had a match between Roman Reigns and Bray Wyatt, which involved Bray Wyatt's um, uh, holding up a picture of, of his daughter in like a, in like a, in like a room or whatever, then, you know, sneak attacks, like all this crazy stuff, hitting a dude with a lantern, uh, all this like crazy psychotic stuff. And the match started with a collar and elbow tie up. <laughs> then it was just a match. Yeah. It's just a regular wrestling match. Uh, that happened with, I think one of the matches that gets critiqued a lot for this was the uh, Triple H, Randy Orton, WrestleMania 25 match, mm. where the build had home invasions and <laughs> kissing of other dudes' wives and, and sledgehammer stuff and all this craziness. And like it started with a collar and elbow tie-up and was treated like a wrestling match. Uh, the feuds need to play into the actual match or there's no point for the actual feuds. Um, the second thing is that plays into my thoughts on this John Cena Seth Rollins thing that, that irked me about last night, which was John Cena basically coming out and, and calling Seth Rollins a loser, a joke, someone who doesn't deserve to be where he is, all that stuff. And it can be argued if John Cena goes into SummerSlam and beats Seth Rollins, what does it accomplish that he just beat a joke? Or if he loses, what is it he lost to a joke? Uh, I think that you have to make the fans seem invested in both sides of the argument. You can be a face and have issues with a heel, but not deride a heel necessarily. And, or not deride a face. Um, and you can validate them without, you know, with still having hatred directed towards them. Uh, I think that's something that needs to be taken into account sometimes. Nice. 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 Uh, uh, any, whoever it is? Uh, to me, it, it, it comes down to they have to go hand in hand somehow. Either it's going to be 100% on the – not 100%, more like 80%, 75% on wrestling or 80%, 75% on storyline. But there's that little – you have to have a little bit of both to make it worthwhile. For me, and and like like Eamon said, we were in the same hangout, and all he said was, "This is we we were both saying this, this is a feud that deserves just an ass kicking, and collar and elbow tie ups aren't an ass kicking. Uh, so, I guess telling a story in the ring as well helps out." Uh, 